السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولو أنهم آمنوا واتقوا لمثوبة من عند الله خير لو كانوا يعلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقولوا راعنا وقولوا انظرنا واسمعوا وللكافرين عذاب أليم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ثم أما بعد A couple of things I failed to mention that I think are important about the last ayah 103 that we were discussing in our conclusion ولو أنهم آمنوا had they only had they been the ones had they only believed and أنهم آمنوا it's repeating itself so Allah is pointing specifically to that group of people and saying they had the alternative. They were in the position where they could have had iman. These are the people that were interested in sihr, if you recall. taqaw, And if they had iman, then the logical progression of having iman is taqwa. So Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning here a progress. And this is something that's come up before, how Allah mentions the progression in the life of a believer. So the first thing is iman, and then the progression of that is taqwa. So walau annahum amanu wa taqaw. But then the, the, the peculiar word that is used is lamathubatun. For sure, lam is lam of tawqeed, mathuba. Thawab is the word for reward. Thawab is a common word, many of you know that. The word mathuba is actually an ism maf'ul. And it's, it's the feminine form of the ism maf'ul. What it suggests is there's an adjective understood before, be it aqibah or jannah or whatever that word may be. And what's interesting about the word mathuba, because it's feminine, in Arabic, the feminine adjective is used for something that's plural. That's also possible, that a feminine adjective is used to describe that which is plural. Now what the word itself means is, that which has been given as a reward. That's mathuba, that which has been given as a reward. But since it's feminine, what is even alluded to in the text is the reward would have been a lot of things. It wouldn't have been one thing. A lot of times our translations, because of the limitation that we have in language, will say the reward from Allah would have been better. But not capturing the beauty of the word mathuba here. That Allah is saying multitudes of rewards. And such rewards that they can't even be described with any description except that you will be compensated. The ism maf'ul has been given. Not the actual noun that is being described, subhanAllah. So this undescribable reward would have been given to them if they only met two conditions. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا If they, they, were just, they had to just meet these two conditions. Here what we're learning is a very important lesson. If someone has temptation in front of them of the impermissible, it's being dangled in front of them because that's what was being done with them. Their final test was that which Allah had forbidden, which Allah had made tantamount to kufr, was dangled in front of them. And they were told before they took it, لا تكفر don't, don't do kufr, you have the option not to do it. But they took it anyway. But what we're learning here is if, if kufr is being dangled in front of you, if the opportunity to do the wrong is dangled in front of you, and you're still able to hold on to iman and to taqwa, the lazim and malzum together, then the reward is unimaginable. لَمَثُوبَةٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And then Allah Azza wa Jalla didn't say, لَمَثُوبَةٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَوْ مِنَ اللَّهِ He says, مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ this is, you know, the grammarian calls this min za'idah. He calls it that it's extra, but the, from a balaghi point of view, from a language point of view, there's nothing extra in the Qur'an. The unimaginable compensation that can't, that is especially from Allah, min indillah. Khair, and in the end Allah just gives a simple comparison. Khair is actually a word used to give comparison between two things. What they got and what Allah had for, especially from Him, that can't even be described, is better. And so the final brief comment I want to make about this beautiful, beautiful ayah. لَمَثُوبَةٌ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ خَيْرٍ is not شرط, kalam shartī. It's not conditional speech. It's actually a jumla ismiya. It's just a statement of fact. The, the unimaginable compensation from Allah is better. So even though some translations will suggest, had they only had iman, the reward from Allah would have been better. Allah didn't say it would have been better. لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ It would have been better. No, no, no. خَيْرٍ It is better. 
In other words, it's still there. If you're alive and you've made those mistakes, the door is still open. That, that reality is still there. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Had those people only known, had they only taken advantage of that. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Now what's amazing is, that, that's the other riddle here. That the previous ayah, did they know this is kufr? Did they know that every, anybody who takes it, they will not have anything in the akhirah? Actually, Allah mentions in the ayah before, لَقَدْ عَلِمُوا لَمَا نِشْتَرَاهُ مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ They already knew whoever takes it has no portion in the akhirah. Then how come the next ayah says, after you know, perfectly explaining and emphasizing, they knew already. The next ayah says, لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Had they only known. Had they only known. We're learning two different degrees of knowledge. Knowledge in your head is not the same as knowledge in your heart. They're two different things. When somebody tells you, don't do this, it's haram, and you say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, and you do it anyway. Did you know? At some level, you did know. But did you really know? Did you, did, you, did you realize it in your heart? No, you didn't feel it. You didn't feel the value of it. So you know the same thing happens to a student. The exam is coming and his friend says, why don't you study? It's, you're running out of time. He says, I know, I know. He says, I know. And then when he sees the exam, he says, if I only knew. <laughs> You know the irony in speech? So now Allah says, had they only known, لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ It's a very powerful means of, you know, of uh, kalimat of hasr here. Right? لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, this was their, their old, you know, one of, one of the many crimes, a new crime is now being mentioned. And the believers are being warned. And this transition immediately, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Immediately. The, the kalam was about Bani Israel. All of a sudden, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا What are we being told? Pay attention. It is not just about them, so you just don't think about that it's about you. You have to stay alert. So the very next ayah, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, la taqulu ra'ina. Ra'a yu ra'i, it's from fa'ala yu fa'ilu, mufa'ala. Okay? So mura'a'atan and ri'a'an, ri'a'at like courtesy. Ra'ina is a fi'il amr, the ya gets dropped. So ra'ina means, the, the, Allah is telling the believers, those of you who claim to have iman, don't say ra'ina, don't say, could you give us a minute, could you give us some courtesy? Meaning the messenger says something, sallallahu alayhi wa and somebody wasn't quite paying attention, or they didn't hear it properly, or they were lost in their own conversation. So they say after he's done speaking, could you kind of repeat that please? Ra'ina. Now some members of Bani Israel, they used to actually extend the ya. Now ra'in in Arabic is a shepherd. And even though in Christian literature, shepherd is used in the sense of a leader, like I'm the shepherd of the town, shepherd of the household, right? So shepherd is in the position of leader. But in Arabian society in particular, Madani society, the shepherd is basically like the guy you hire for your lawn mowing nowadays. It's the guy who works for you. It's the guy that you're basically, if you call him by that name, you know, if you call him by the name of his profession, sometimes it's even a means to demean him. Hey, janitor, come here. Right? When you call somebody a janitor, even if their job is a janitor, you should call them by their name. If you call them by their profession, it's like you're trying to insult them, that you're nothing but a janitor. So now if you say, instead of ra'ina, if you extend the ya, ra'ina, it becomes an ism fa'il. And it means, oh our shepherd, meaning the guy who we hire to herd our sheep. Basically the equivalent today of a janitor, you know. So Bani Israel heard the, the Sahaba say, ra'ina, please pay attention to us. And they would extend it and say, oh ra'ina, our shepherd. And then when you asked, would you say? They said, no, no, ra'ina. We meant, please give us a minute. So that they're playing with words. This is not something new for Bani Israel. Allah Azza wa mentions them playing with words even in Allah's book. So that's not something all that new. And you know, of course, there are other incidents like assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum is basically a means of cursing someone. If you drop the lamb altogether, which is a specific warning to desis. Assalamu alaikum. Sound <laughs> <laughs> watch out. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Right? So in this case, ra'ina. So Allah commands his, his sahaba, la taqulu ra'ina. Just don't say ra'ina. Just don't use that word. Even because it can be taken the wrong way, don't use it. Here we're learning something amazing about the manners of speech. Do you know even nowadays our youth, especially our youth, I mean, all, the, the, the senior citizens don't know much about the the, the play of language in our time, at least in English, in, in Urdu or Arabi they might know, but in English they don't know as much. Are there words you can say in English that can have dual meaning? And have a really bad meaning too? But when you say, what'd you say? Ah, nothing. 
Or, you know, what the new game that's played is, I don't know, it's getting old now, actually. It's, there's a really filthy word, and you say a word that's very close to it. We just take a, we change a little bit of the spelling, right? And then say, oh, I didn't say that, I just said this. Right? I just had the innocent version. I won't even give you as an example the innocent version. I think all the guys that know what I'm talking about and the sisters, they can already think of 20 words in their head that, that they, they manipulate, right? Now what Allah is teaching his sahaba is don't play with speech because Allah knows the intent. And if you even use an innocent word, like ra'ina is an innocent word, but somebody else, it will conjure up in their minds bad ideas, avoid that kind of speech altogether. This is a very good principle in communication in life, whether you're communicating with your spouse or your boss or your friends. If you say something that can be taken the wrong way, don't say it. If you have the common sense to know that if you say this, there's a way to interpret this that might be offensive. Just find another way of saying it. So Allah's mess, Allah, is told, Allah tells the, the Sahaba, وَقُولُ انظُرْنَا Just say, please wait for us. Look towards us. انظُرْنَا Could you, could you please look this way? In other words, that's a polite way of saying, could you repeat that? Could you give me some attention, etc. Unzurna instead of saying ra'ina, which can be taken the wrong way. What a beautiful piece of advice. And so, because the Qur'an gave this subject importance, we shouldn't take it lightly. We shouldn't say playing with words here, that's not, what's the big deal? Just have a little fun with words. If it's a small deal, Allah would not mention it in His qawlan thaqilan, right? In the Qur'an calls its words heavy words. It's heavy speech. Allah would not reveal this from the seventh heaven to us if it was minuscule, if it was you know, something that could, you, you could get away with or do away with. It's not that important. It became important because Allah mentioned it, because Allah talked about it. So, لا تقولوا رَاعِنَا وَقُولُوا انظرنا. And then He says, وَاسْمَعُوا Really good advice also. <laughs> Why would someone say, could you please repeat that? Could you, please, could, you, could you say that again? Turn this way, give me extra time, give me extra time. Why would someone say that to begin with? Because they weren't listening the first time around. So Allah says, you know, the first time, وَاسْمَعُوا And listen. Now what's interesting is in, the Quran, in Arabic, when you say listen carefully, the word for that is وَاسْتَمِعُوا Listen carefully. وَاسْمَعُوا So just, just listen. It's not listen carefully, it's just listen. You know what that suggests? You weren't paying even a little bit of attention the first time. So this time around, just at least listen. At least listen. وَاسْمَعُوا And then he ends the ayah because this is not just doing this with a teacher or a boss or a parent, not even those are important roles. This is being done with the Messenger So even the least bit of disregard for the Messenger, what does Allah, what does Allah say to, coming to the defense of His Messenger? He says, وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And specifically for kafirin, for disbelievers and the ungrateful, there is incredible, you know, painful punishment. There is in, intensely painful punishment, عَذَابٌ alim. What is the crime of the kafir here? Is he attempting to kill the Messenger of Allah? No. Is he attempting to ins you know, uh, you know, change the book of Allah or any other of these kinds of crimes? No. He's just playing with words to make a mockery of the Messenger. And that's enough. وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And so we'll end inshallah ta'ala with this ayah because this took some time. I was going to go one more ayah but inshallah ta'ala we'll, we'll, we'll take it easy and uh, cover مَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا tomorrow and even talk a little bit about the ayah of Nasr. That is not very well understood and it's also used or, or misused quite a bit nowadays when Allah Azza wa talks about some ayat being abrogated or mansukh, you know, how that, that even is being manipulated. So we'll discuss that tomorrow bi idhnillah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.